Where would you be buried? What was Joseph waiting for? He was waiting for the kingdom. So I asked the question, if you were, this question, if you were going to mock the Jews who say we have no king but Caesar, but then the religious ones are waiting for a king, where would you kill their king? Would you kill him in some obscure place out back on the Damascus Road? Or would you kill him in the place where he's supposed to become the conqueror? Which is more of a mockery? Come on. What were they trying to do? They were trying to mock Jesus and mock the Jews. Yep. That's where I would do it. On that busy roadway that goes right there to the Mount of Olives and around the Mount of Olives to the other side to Bethany. Let me go back to say something about this rich religious man, Joseph, just so you can understand this man. He was a man of faith. He was a man of great faith. He thought that Christ would come down from the cross, touch the mount, and become a conquering king. But when it didn't happen, when Jesus died, Joseph had the same faith a father Abraham had, a kind of that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. He did not lose his faith in Christ. He said, this is the conquering Christ. I let him be buried in my burial place. He was a great man of faith. Let me say this. What Abraham saw of the resurrection of this, of this one done in figure, let me say, Joseph saw it done in fact. Amen. Hallelujah. Cool. Yes, sir. Come on. Some say that Abraham sacrificed Isaac and Ty at the Temple Mount. I do not know that that's true, but that's what some traditions say. And uh, the Bible says that when Abraham came to the land of Moriah, the place which God had told him, he lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Now, Israel, Jerusalem is on Mount Moriah. If he came to Mount Moriah and he looked and saw a place that far off and God had said you would crucify him on one of the mountains, not on that particular mountain, and you saw a place that far off of what's about a mile away, and you can see it, Mount Moriah. Or not Mount Moriah, excuse me, Mount, the Mount of Olives. Where is, could, could it have been guided to that temple mount and told to look from there to see the place of the cross? The feet to see the place of the crucifixion. I would say there's a good possibility. Let me say, just because tradition says something doesn't mean it's sad. That's right. You know, the temple mount's the place of worship. But can I tell you what you need to do? If you want to worship, you need to look away under Jesus. Yeah. To look away from the place of worship and to look to the place that may seem afar off but is actually nigh to where you are. Let me say you come to the house of God today, we call it a place of worship. The only way you're ever going to worship is look afar off to the cross of Christ. All Abraham had to do was look afar off from Mount Moriah and see a place called Mount of Olives where he could crucify his son because he, because he believed he'd rise again. Yeah. As God had promised. Come on. Come on, preacher. Come on. I am just trying to tell you. Come on. Question number one is where was Jesus crucified? And as the exact location of the sacrifice of Isaac is not known, I am convinced that if God wanted us to know exactly the details of where Christ was crucified, he would have told us. Yeah. He would have pinpointed it. Come on. He gave us a name, and yet we can find the Romanists call it one place, the Protestant, the religionists call it another place. But can I say, I've got some Jewish friends that will tell you it's on the Mount of Olives. Hey, come on. You say, why? And these Jewish guys are Christians. They're of Jewish heritage. Yes, sir. You say, why? Because of our second question. And I will 
to say this real quick right before I get there. Men like to worship places. Guilty. That is why some people uh, build great edifices and talk about their church, their church, their church. Mm. The building is not the church, the people is the church. That's right. The building is just a building. Any old building would do. They did it in the houses back in the first century. They've done it in the houses. We started this work in a house. You can do it any old way. But let me say, you won't do it any old way. Most people won't worship God unless they come to a place that's sanctified and set apart for that purpose. I'm not getting into all that. Come on. But the question is, not about a place. You don't worship a place, you worship a person. Set your sights on Jesus. So we come to question number two, what did they see? What did they see? I picture the scene. As I picture the scene of what did they see, I, I see it this way. They beat our lovely Lord. They bruised our precious Master. And they brought Him forth to proclaim, Behold, your King. Yeah. And the mocking continues as they march Him forth. Out of the eastern gate that He's supposed to be the conquering King coming through. They said, we're going to march you out in shame and sorrow. To death in despair. We're marching you out. We're marching you across the Kidron Valley. We're marching you up that mountainside to the place that you say you're coming to. Yeah. Come on. Oh, King of Israel, show us. Show us. And here they are. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. That's the crowds crying that out. That's the religious leaders crying that out. That's all the, everybody's mocking. Some would say, oh, the place outside the back gate, the Damascus gate, is a common place for crucifixion. Oh, let me tell you what I read. I read that they crucified people nigh near where they caught people. And that would work if these two thieves were highway men. They may have been robbing people over on the road to Bethany and Beth Bethpage. They have been robbed, may have been robbing people. They were thieves. Yeah. According to what the scripture says. That's true. And Christ, where was he arrested? At the Mount of Olives. Yep. Yes, sir. I'm not telling you that's a fact. I'm just telling you that that's what I've read some things. Yes, sir. I told you when I was not giving you biblical based stuff that I would let you know. Yep. But it is a historically idea. I see the crowd. And I hear the chants crucify him. The nails pierce his hands and his feet. And he hung to die to death, the demeaning death of the crime that he had not committed. Cruelty beyond comparison. And the mocking continued. The, the thieves, the criminals reviled him. <laughs> Yet one repented, as we find in Luke 23. One repented. The crowd mocked him as he died. The chief priests led the chants. We can see it over here in Mark or Matthew 27, verse yeah. number 40. And saying, Thou destroyest the temple and builders in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Yeah. Likewise, also the chief priests mocked him with the scribes, and the others said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross, and we will believe him. Why would you believe him? If he came down from the cross. If it was on the back side of the city. Yeah, come on. But you certainly believe him if his feet touched down on the Mount of Olives when he comes off that cross. I will tell you this. He died. He died. And what happened next is what interests me. In verses 51 and 52, it says, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent and twain from top to bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. And then, I want to look at what they saw. What happened? Now, 
think when the centurion and they that with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. What did they think when they saw what they saw? When the earth quacked and the rocks rent on the Mount of Olives where they were standing and had crucified the Lamb of God. Yep. Oh, they sure thought for certain. Whoa, this is what is written in the prophets and the graves open. This is what is written in the prophets. This is truly, certainly, this is the Son of God. This is who, who they were waiting for. This is who the Israelites were waiting for. This is their graves were open of the saints. Certainly, when they saw what they saw. That wouldn't work on the other side of the city. That only worked where he says the rock would rent, the earth would quake, Come the on. mountain would separate, Come and on. the graves would open. It only works in that place. Yeah. They saw this, and then they turned to the city. Now they probably could not get a clear vision. It was between a half mile and a mile away. But you're elevated in a high place. You're looking down on the city. And you're seeing a stirring in the temple. Because something's happened there. Everybody's, you're seeing people moving around. You're saying it's moving faster than it ever moves. But not only do you see a stirring in the temple. You see a shining from the temple. Because when the veil is rent, the Shekinah glory of God shines forth. Because God is now revealed. Mm -hmm. If you really believe God met with them in the inner court, in the holiest of all. When the veil was rent, the glory shined through. What would you do when the glory shines through? Would you say, truly, this is the Son of God? When the rocks are rent, the earth You may not see exactly all the details, but you can certainly see a stirring a half a mile to a mile away if you're elevated high enough and it's a clear day. You certainly can see the Shekinah glory of God shining from the Holy Spirit. What would you do when the glory shines through? They turned and saw that. And the Bible says they feared greatly. They feared greatly because they believed that this, that they had crucified the Lamb of God and that the Lamb of God's death brought back brought the Lord of glory's wrath. Now my question, my last question, what does all this mean? What does all this mean? And I will be finished in just a moment. What really matters? It matters not so much where the Lamb of God died, but that the Lamb of God died. And why the Lamb of God died. Christ died for sinners. Behold the Lamb of God who's taken away the sin of the world. It does not matter so much where the Lamb of God died, but that the Lamb of God died and why the Lamb of God died. We could spend our life arguing about the place. But I want to tell you, the message is not a place. The message is a person. Behold the Lamb of God. Amen. That takes it away. Come on. Now, also, it matters not so much where he was buried. But that he was buried. And that he rose again. Uh, not not uh, necessarily uh, where the tomb was but that he was placed in the tomb. It does not matter so much where he was buried, but it does matter that he was buried. Yes, sir. What happened when he said it is finished and he was placed in that tomb? Well, first he became the scapegoat and took our sins 
to a land not inhabited. To leave our sins in a land not inhabited. To the cast them in the, behind his back in the depths of the sea. To be remembered no more. And let me say, cast him in the depths of the sea. He did not put up a no fishing sign. He got rid of the sea. For in John says, and there was no sea in the new Jerusalem. There is no sea. They can't go fishing my sins out. There's no sea anymore. Hallelujah. Come on. This is gone, gone, gone. Listen. It does not matter. It does not matter as much to me where exactly he died, but whether he died. And he did. Why he died. To pay the wages of sin. It matters not much to me uh, that he was died and he was buried, but that he rose again. He conquered death. He conquered hell. He conquered the grave. And now he ever liveth in me and for me to make intercession for me. We could spend our life arguing about where the place is. But I want to tell you who the person is. It's not matter to me whether it's, going to, whether it's under the Holy Sepulchre Church or whether it's over there in Gordon's Calvary or whether it's on the Mount of Olives. I will tell you this. What matters to me is that He died for me and that He rose again for me on my behalf and now He's risen and goes to heaven to ever make intercession for me. That's what matters to me. And one day, He's coming back for me. Oh, I shall be caught up in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall I ever be with the Lord. And I can comfort myself and comfort others with those words. That's very comforting. So we asked where Jesus died. We asked what did they say? We asked where or what really matters. What really matters is that he's coming again. He died for me. He rose again. And he is coming again. They mocked him and marched him out. Across the Kidron Valley, up that mountainside to the place of the skull. And they conquered Christ the King. But he said, I, 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 I'm leaving on my own terms. I'm leaving on my own terms. You thought you got rid of me on that cross. You thought you got rid of me on that cross. He said, no, 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 no. I'm leaving on my own time. I'm leaving from this place, but I'm leaving on my own time. So he got up. Spent 40 days showing him what he said, go walking around. And he came back to the same old place. And he said, boom. And he was teleported on out of here, hallelujah, in a cloud. He come, and then guess what? When he comes, he cometh with cloud. Hallelujah. When he comes back, he'll come with clouds and every eye shall see him and they which pierce him. He'll come back to that same old mountain uh, where he went up from. And when he comes back, he's going to touch down. And guess what's going to happen? The earth is going to quake. The rocks are going to break. And the graves are going to open. Amen. Amen. And guess what those Old Testament saints that didn't get up before? They'll get up again. The other ones that were got up before will get up again. And they'll come marching across south of that, off of that mountain. They'll come marching across the Kidron Valley. And they'll be saying, Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. And they'll say, Well, I'm going to be in that number. Oh, when the saints go marching in. And let me just say this. When he comes back, I'm coming with him. Amen. Amen. I'm not coming as a servant, though. I'm coming as his sweetheart. And so I'll be with him. I'll be riding the chariot where he's riding. If he's riding that white horse, that white stallion, I'll be riding with him. I'll be riding on right behind him. I'll be holding on to him. He'll be holding on to me. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And he's coming again. I just want you to understand some things. Ah, uh, it really doesn't matter. Where he died. It matters that he it really doesn't matter where he was buried. It matters that he was buried. Because it really doesn't matter uh, where exactly he rose again, about that he rose again, and it matters that he is a coming again. Thank God. But if you're lost, if you're lost, 
All that means nothing. Because <coughs> when he comes back to rule and reign, he will come back, first of all, when he comes back to rule and reign, it will be after he's already sinned his judgment. He'll have sent some judgment. He'll have sent the judgment. He'll have sent the plagues. He'll have sent the, the vials. He'll have sent the trump. He'll have done all of that. Then he'll come back and set up his kids. Well, that's going on on earth. We'll be sitting with him in heaven. Enjoying a marriage feast. Enjoying a honeymoon. Oh, hallelujah. Honeymoon. With the sun. Hallelujah. Our glory will be his glory. That's all the glory of the moon is the sun. We get to have a honeymoon because we're with the sun. Hallelujah. I, I just I just y'all might not get that. I like that. Just threw that in there for free. Hallelujah. Every bit of this is free. I'm just trying to tell you, it's good to me. But if you're lost, you don't get in on the goodness. You will face the wrath and judgment of God. Because you are a rebel. But the answer to that is do just what they just what the centurion did. Just what those who saw it did. They said, truly, this is the Son of God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Believe and trust. That is him. They saw the judgment coming. When they saw the judgment coming, before it was too late, that centurion said, Truly, this is the Son of God. I am looking, I cannot tell you the day nor the hour of his return. I cannot tell you the day nor the hour when he comes back to rapture to ride his bride out. But I can tell you this, right up until that time, you have time. You say, I'll put it off another day. Who says you have another day? Come on, come on. Who says today is not the day when he says, come up hither and the dead in Christ shall rise first? Who says there's another day? If you're lost and you don't go on this day, you will fight. The right. Mm. You will fight the right. Some say the wrath is just the last part of the tribulation. The whole tribulation period is wrath. It just gets more wrathful as it goes along. The whole of it is wrath. It just gets more wrathful as it goes along. Will you? Trust Christ. Our Father, 